back to the show. Folks, ladies and gentlemen, you know my next guest and her whiteboard from asking the tough questions at congressional hearings. Please welcome back to The Late Show, Congresswoman Katie Porter. Nice to see you again. We, I've interviewed you before, but never in person over over the the Zoom. Um, yesterday, we were talking about Justice Clarence Thomas and uh, the latest revelations about his enjoyment of uh, the half million dollar uh, trips to the South Seas and the the yacht life. And as someone who talks about elitism in our government, what do you have anything to say about his? <laughs> About his about his penchant for uh, fine cigars and mountain retreats. Yeah, well, I think the hypocrisy is rich. I mean, he talks about enjoying the RV lifestyle, and I would presume that he draws drives his RV to the private airport where he gets on the private jet to go to the private island. And I bet sure. it's even a private RV. Yes. So, but what is the private jet but the RV of the skies? That's right. That's right. It really is. And so he's living that lifestyle. Sure. And meanwhile, I'm in a in a minivan. Yes, we will get to that in just a moment. The name of your book is I Swear Politics is Messier Than My Minivan. <laughs> you've served in the House since 2019, and now uh, you've announced that you're running for the Senate. Uh, to uh... <laughs> Why? Why, why would you want to be a senator instead of a congressperson? You don't get to raise money constantly, and you don't get to run for office every two years. So first, I think running for office is the most fun part of the job. Mm -hmm. And that was actually a surprise to me. I went to Washington where I wanted to be a policy nerd, mm -hmm. and I thought I would love Washington. And I say in the book, and this is true, Washington, D.C. is where time goes to get wasted. The really valuable work I do is actually the campaigning. It's listening to people, it's knocking doors, it's town halls, all of that stuff, the kissing the babies and the puppies, and that's all pure joy. Mm -hmm. And Washington, D.C. is sort of the price that you pay for mm -hmm. the fun of campaigning. <laughs> um, the other thing I'll say about why run for the Senate is in the Senate, you get to serve on twice as many committees. And oh, that means- Oh, because there are a fourth as many people. There's fourth as many people, so you get twice as many committees. And that's like double roasted coffee. It's like double roasted whiteboards. <laughs> Think about the force multiplier there. Do you ever feel insulted that no one's trying to bribe you? Yes. <laughs> yes. I mean, think how fun it would be to tell them off, but that never happens to me. I did have, when I first got to Washington, um, somebody, a lobbyist said, oh, you're, you're one of those. What does that mean? I don't know. I thought attractive, you know, single woman. I was like, <laughs> And he said, no, no, someone who doesn't take corporate PAC money. Wow. And I, I, now I don't take lobbyist money either after meeting this guy. And, and he said, well, don't worry, we'll break you. What? And he has not. He has not. But that was a powerful lesson. Wow. So before, I mean, your, your knowledge of CEOs comes before, before you were in Congress, you worked in banking regulation. Let's talk about Silicon Valley Bank, mm -hmm. OK? Um, do you see that as a failure of regulation, and A, what should the government be doing, and did people see that coming? So I think it is a failure of regulation in the sense that we might have been able to prevent it with better regulation, but part of the goal with regulation of bank failures is to have them fail as least badly as possible. It's like a student. There's a difference between a D minus and an F. And what we were trying to do with banking regulation is when banks get into trouble is to try to make sure that they fail in a way that does the least damage. And look, we put some good regulations in place after Dodd-Frank, Dodd -Frank, after the financial crisis. Mm -hmm. It only took Congress five years later to decide to roll those back. And that was the Trump White House, the Trump Congress. But to be clear, about 45 Democrats joined in deregulating banks of the exact size I, I, of Silicon Valley I, Bank. I, I, I believe Barney Frank might have been one of those people who supported the repealing of some of that regulation. Yep. Does that surprise you? Well, I think people get talked into things by lobbyists. They get told, oh, we well, don't really need this regulation. Let me be clear, the whole point of banking regulation is you hope you don't need it. Because I'll tell you this, when it's your money in the bank, 
any money where I, any bank where I have my money is a bank that's too big to fail, and I think most Americans would feel the same way. Okay, let's get back to the book. I swear, <laughs> politics is messier than my minivan. Uh, it details your life in Congress uh, as a single mom. You say it's a bit controversial. What's controversial about this? Well, I think there's this effort in politics to try to pretend that that Congress is glamorous and and we are powerful and it's all this you know really wonderful, amazing things. And the, the truth is, it's like you're hot, you're late, you're sweaty, you don't know what's going on, you're flying back and forth. And I think we should be more honest with the American people about Congress is a mess. And that's because democracy is kind of supposed to be messy. Mm -hmm. That's okay, mm -hmm. but what's not okay is lying to the American people about it and pretending that it's all easy and it's all cut and dried. Because the truth is, it's hard. It is hard to go to work every day with Marjorie Taylor Greene as a colleague. <laughs> I mean, most people would just find a different cubicle, a different job. Right. It's hard to commute mm -hmm. 3,000 miles right. to your job, right? It's hard to work in, a, in an industry that is where, you know, before I was a politician, I was a professor, and I actually used to be respected mm. in my job. And I think mm -hmm. one of the things the book tries to grapple with is a longstanding fact. It's true when Democrats are in power. It's true when Republicans are in power. Congress has about the same popularity as the American cockroach. And I think we should think about why is that? Why don't people like us? Why don't people trust us? And I think a lot of it is because we're not straight with them about what it's really like, about why it's hard, about what the challenges are, um, and about what we can do about it. Um, a couple of the people that you're running up against, I've also interviewed uh, Adam Schiff, uh, Barbara Lee. Do you, want to, do you want to just trash him right now? You just want to smack him? Absol absolutely you want to smack not. him around absolutely right now? Absolutely not. Look, I think the Senate race has a potential to be really good for California and really good for the country. If we do this right, Barbara and Adam and I, we will help turn out voters all around the country. We will help energize people to understand why it's so important they vote. There is no path to a durable majority for Congress that does not run through California. And I'm gonna run this Senate race in a way that not only sends me to the Senate, but sends Democrats into the majority for years to come. Now, that, would be, that would be certainly interesting. That would be an interesting change of pace. And I, and I, and I, and I, and I know that the, the Republican Party has many failings, but all people are people, we're all just humans. Where does the Democratic Party fall down on the job? For me, the fact that we didn't pass a congressional ban on stock trading when Democrats were in power tells you something about just who's, who has an investment portfolio and who's trading stock. It's Democrats and Republicans who don't want to give up that bit of power to earn the respect and trust of the American people. And I think we should call ourselves out, hold ourselves accountable as Democrats for that. Congresswoman, thank you so much for being thank here. You. Her new memoir, I Swear, Politics is Messier Than My Minivan, is out now. Representative Katie Porter, everybody. We'll be right back.